Hi there. I just want to introduce our next speaker, Anne Baudet. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the session. I'm really excited to have you here and I want to thank all the volunteers, Jonathan and Alfredo for making this wonderful event happen again. It's so nice to see people in person and to share what we know about WordPress. Hello, hello. We will have a 15 minute Q&A after the session if you have any questions. I'm just going to start with a little bit about me. Shortly after starting my WordPress blog as a non-techie mom of three boys, my blog garnered a million views and 35,000 subscribers. I was pretty surprised, but this positive feedback encouraged me to continue. Um, uh, my Loving Yourself blog posts um, got a lot of attention and then writing a book out of those blog posts came later. Pump Your Own Tires, Crossing the Bridge to Loving Yourself, which I self-published. And after that, I published a novel, a fiction book, and then I made a course about how to write a book, how to write a, a novel. Um, because I love to learn and I love to share what I learn. And WordPress was a really engaging, encouraging environment. You have comments, you have followers, you have people asking you, you know, how do you do this? And so you know your market instantly. It, it's just beautiful, like, and it's free. Um, it's a platform used by 70 million people across the world. And so that encouraged me because at the time I didn't really have any money or you know didn't have much inspiration. I just always wanted to be a writer and this was the perfect place to start. Um, okay, so I wrote a fiction book. I'm currently writing my memoir and I'm teaching a memoir writing group at the Cloverdale Library. Um, once again, learning and teaching. I took a bunch of courses. I've been to a bunch of writing seminars and that's what I like to do, input, output. That's my thing. Um, so in 2012, my three boys were all grown up and leaving the house and I finally started to think about myself. I'd been backbenched because of hockey practices, band practices, um, you name it. And you know, it's just my time now. So I'm gonna start this blog. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if anybody will read it, but whatever, I'm gonna try. And at first it takes me a long time to do a post. It takes me a week. And you know, it's, it's crazy because I don't know the technology and I'm nervous and you know. Um, so, but I keep going anyways. And I'm doing it at three o'clock in the morning after all my other work's done so it's not interfering with anybody's stuff or anything. You, you guys that are moms, no. <laughs> um, so I was new to the internet as well. And um, I was an early member of James Altucher's Choose Yourself group. He's a best-selling New York Times author from New York, and he started a little online group to help people with business and share his knowledge. And he said, do something that scares you every day. So I scared myself and started a WordPress blog. Um, I didn't really know, you know what I was doing, and um, but birds sing because they have a song. Writers write because they have a story. It's a need that you have to create. Um, I didn't have any money at the time, so I washed out a pickle jar and I hid it in my closet away from everybody and I, I taped a blog onto the jar, just a little paper. And every time I'd get $5 change at the supermarket, I'd stick it in the jar, and eventually I got enough money to host the blog. And that was really fun, because then you get your stats and you see who's looking at your blog, and um, it's, it becomes more than about you. It becomes bigger than you, your sharing. Um, okay, so I, I 
didn't know what to write, so I wrote a post about spring cleaning my backyard. I go to the dump with my dog. The people at the landfill know my dog. They give them a biscuit. Like, it's such mundane stuff, and I get 13,000 views on the post. I'm like, what's going on? Um, you know, that, this is crazy. This is just my boring life, and, you know, it's, it's so surprising, right? And, um, yeah, various, like, other just nothing kind of posts, and I thought, well, this is great. Um, <laughs> Um, okay, sorry, yeah, that's, this is about me and the stuff I've been doing. Um, sorry, I was supposed to put that up there. Um, okay, I won a contest. I was winning a contest to have lunch with Brett Wilson. I don't know if you guys know him. He's a Canadian entrepreneur, and he used to be on Dragon's Den, the show where they go to get funding for their ideas. I think it's Shark Tank in, in the States. And um, I said, I have a blog, and he had done a book. And I said, I'll review your book. Um, so we're at the luncheon, and he said, yeah, you know, when I come home, I just like reading a blog about an ordinary person like you. Like, I've had all these deals going all day, and it's so stressful with all this business stuff I do. And I just like to read about an ordinary woman's day. And I thought, wow. like." I didn't even ever think of that. A billionaire is reading my blog. Like, this is so cool, you know, and I get to meet him because of WordPress. Like, it's crazy what WordPress has done when you, you stay with it and keep on it. It's phenomenal. Um, so he's sent me things I've kept in touch, and it's been wonderful. I decided that my blog needs a theme, though. I can't just keep writing about my backyard and stuff. I need to do something that resonates with me and other people. And I was getting comments, and they're saying, how do you start your blog? How do you do it? And I love reading it. And I even got an email from a psychology company. They were doing a big study and a program, and they said, can we use your blog? Um, you know, as reference, like we love your posts and we want something that just an ordinary person is writing. But I didn't get the email because I was swimming in um, emails and comments. So I had to shut off the comments and, and emails. I was so backlogged because I was doing all my regular stuff. And um, anyway, so there's lots of opportunities in there, hidden in there. But of course, I missed a lot of them because my, my main goal is to write and share and help, so I would have done it, but I didn't. Um, but I figured, I, I, when my kids were small, I used to take them to the library every week. And I had had a difficult childhood myself, so when I was at the library helping them read, I'd see all these books about you know, my trauma or whatever that I had to heal from. So I kept checking out books, and I'd go home and read all these books about, you know, various issues to deal with your past. And it really helped um, me in my development. And I thought, I think there's other people out there who could benefit from this as well. So I started writing about loving yourself and positive thinking, because we're sort of wired to be negative and complain and, you know, and just gratitude, positive thinking, loving yourself. And that really took off. And it was a great theme for me because I had read all these books and just had all this knowledge in my head about it. Um, and within a short time, you know, I got lots of, lots of action. Who has a blog here? I'm just wondering. Okay, awesome. This little core. Are are they mostly business blogs or personal? The latest one's just business. But just, just to have, uh, uh, sort of like yours, uh, back in uh, 2000. Okay, just kind of talking to people and yeah. just getting, well, you, home dad stuff. right. Oh, cool. Yeah, you, you got a lot of practice from that and then you branched out into business. Yeah. Yeah, but you. But you're here, so you still believe in it. You still love it. That's like me. Sometimes you know I'm writing in a book and I'm intense on stuff and I don't blog, um, but I love the blog still. Still always keep it. And yeah, how about the other people? Is it business? Are you business? Yeah, what are you selling? Do you mind me asking? Or well, I'm a web designer, so I actually have two blogs. I have one for potential clients and one to mentor other web designers. Cool. 
That's really cool. Yeah, because that's such a, you know, a maze for somebody like me, like web design, what, you know, I'm just, I just have the writing on there. And so, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I used to be a teacher, so mine are all education related. Oh, cool. What did, what grade did you teach? I was an ESL teacher. So it's like we're teaching ESL or learning. That's yeah. amazing. I taught ESL as well, and um, yeah, my students could really benefit for some, from something like that, because I found with my ESL students, they would be, they'd have a different language, and they'd get in a classroom of 30 and say, I, the teacher's talking too fast, I don't really know what she said. I don't know if you found that. I, they'd come to class and say, I have to memorize these 50 cards, and I said, by tomorrow? That doesn't sound right. I stayed up all night, and then it was like the teacher said, you have a month. But they, the language, they didn't understand that. Yeah. So when they came to tutoring, I'd say, oh, no, no, that's not possible. She didn't want this all done tonight, you know. Um, so yeah, really helpful. Yeah. OK, so I wrote my first book from my blog posts, and I just like sat down and wrote. I just wrote everything I knew. And when you're writing, a, people are wired for stories since the campfire days. We want to hear a story arc from beginning to end. We want to hear an adventure and a transformation. And you know, we love that stuff. We're hooked on that stuff. So I just started writing about you know my childhood and a little bit and how I was drawn to these books. And I just distilled all the knowledge into a few simple sentences. You can read this on your lunch break. It's a 30-minute read. It's not, you know, a daunting book to take on or whatever. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about books, so I just delved in like I did with the WordPress blog. And, um, you know, I, I wanted a five by nine. I wanted the cream colored paper. They give you a proof. This is done on KDP on Amazon. Has anybody published a book on KDP? Awesome. Yeah. So how did you find the experience? It's difficult at first to learn all the ins and outs, but once you do it a couple times, then it's easier, for sure. Right. Like, make all the mistakes already. Right, yeah. They keep kicking it back to you, like, oh, that format won't fit, or, um, yeah. How was your experience? Uh, it was many years ago, so I don't really remember, but I, I don't remember it being very arduous. Yeah, if you're techie. You yeah, I think it is. Are really clear. They are. They'll just tell you, you know, you need this kind of a PDF or you'll, you know, it's pretty, if you have any technical knowledge at all, um, yeah, maybe, you know, up to a week or two, you'll pretty much have all the information. But it's selling the book that was much more difficult. Yes. <laughs> That's a whole other game to, to a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you take any Amazon ads out? Yeah, I did. Yeah. They're reasonable. They're, you know, for five dollars you can get an ad for your book and and word of mouth. Mine was word of mouth. I went I did a book signing. A local bookstore took it um, and put it on their shelves and I did a book signing there and you know, you can kind of do a ground level marketing as well. But yeah. So um where are we now? Um yeah, so I, I started to feel more confident with the blog and the book. So then, and I did the book in 90 days too. I had, I always have these challenge within a challenge because a book's a challenge in itself. And then I try and make an other challenge. <laughs> um, so I did it in 90 days and um, just went through it. And then I did a novel. This is a, a proof. I thought I'd do the novel in the same size as the, the book, but then it didn't look right, so then I did a real novel size to make it look better. This was glossy, this is matte, like they'll ask you to choose all your preferences, as you know. Okay, so, um, okay. Okay, I'm just to do another slide. Okay, starting my blog. We've already been through that. That's my blog post. Um, okay, let's wrote my first book. Okay, so when you have your blog, you build up a body of work, and that's the beauty of the blog. You've got feedback from what posts are popular, so you know what you're good at, what, what aligns with your readers, 
and you build up a body of work and from that body of work you start seeing a theme or a thread. What do I what do I like and what are people resonating with? Why are they coming here? Why would they spend their time here? Um, like I said about the my self-help type thread that um, became popular and um, so once you have the body of work um, you can build the book because you have the themes um, and you also start building a brand, a niche, a tribe. You, you start feeling, you know, how everything's coming together. It takes time and effort, but, but it's a cool feeling when, you know, it's right coming right out of you and you're building it. Um, and you know who you're writing it for on WordPress, so that's cool too. Um, you can publish a print book. Um, or you can make an ebook, which is a really good thing if you have a business. You make a small, you know, 10 ways how to wash your car or whatever it is, um, and you can give it away as a promotional item, sorry, um, to your customers. Like, um, I'll email you my free ebook. It's kind of a, an offer that you can make if you're trying to build a business or, or a brand. Um, and. You can also go to like companies like Island Blue Printing in the Victoria area, and for $14, they'll print you a book like this, even a, a larger book. If you want to write like your memoir and give it to your kids and your grandkids, um, you can just you don't need all the formal you know publishing ISBNs or anything. You can print your own book out of your blog and you know sell it yourself. You can go to fairs and. Um, the thing about, if you do that, you get all the money. If you sell it for $20, you make $6. Um, if you publish on KDP, uh, you get about 40% of the price you list it at. You choose the price to list it at, and then they deduct the printing costs. So, you know, you, you're getting about 40%. The other option is to go with a traditional publisher and to do that, you have to send a query letter and say, here's a sample chapter. Um, you're nodding. You've probably done that route, too. I know people who have that. Yeah. So, um, and then if they say, hey, we like it, send us some more, they'll handle everything for you. They'll, you know, print it, publish it. But you don't own your rights anymore. You give them all your rights. And they pay you royalties. And even best-selling authors might get two bucks a book. It's... It's not huge, but if they get you on book tours, you can make money and a following, and you know do other products. So it it can it's not it's more like a labor of love than a big lucrative business. But you know the top people do make a lot of money. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to show you the simple steps that I took to make my book. Um, and as you know, I self-publish, so I organized my book into 10 chapters because that was a simple, easy way to keep track of everything. Just boom, 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 10, start to finish. Um, and you write, like I say, an arc from introduction to, to conclusion. And you want to have a story in there, a personal connection in there, because that hooks people into reading it. Um, you, you are the main character of this story. If you are writing anything personal, it's just like a fiction book where you're a main character going through a journey. And if it's a business, your idea or your product is the main character. And you can talk about all the pitfalls, all the you know, challenges, because you know a hero's journey is we face obstacles and we slay the dragons. And it's the same in business. You have to you solve so many problems and go through so much turmoil, you know, to get to the success. So, um, so you're transformed by the end, and that's what people can relate to. They they want to be transformed too. Um, the hero's journey was popularized by Joseph Campbell, and it was used by George Lucas in his Star Wars films. He used that exact formula of the you know call to adventure, the unwilling you know taking the call and facing all the enemies, getting some helpers, and finally crossing a threshold to success. Um, and your intention for writing your book is super important. What, what do you want to do? I want it to help people that felt depressed or sad. 
um, in the way I did and, and make them feel better. But you really have to think about what is your intention, why are you writing it, and who are you writing it for. Um, free writing. So we've all been told we have to follow a formula and do everything by the rules, and but free writing just frees up your flow. It frees your mind. You, you just get your take. We all hear about AI and how it's writing books and taking over, and but AI can't do the noticing that you can do. You'll, you'll hear about all this fear of, well, why write a book and AI can write it? It's true, but it can't write your book. You are the only person on this planet who can write your book. You're the only one who sees through your eyes and has your vision. So just remember that, that um, you know, you, you are the, the main, main thing. And, and if you flow, your subconscious mind adds a bunch of ideas. And that's what I did just for three months. I just flowed out the stuff. Um, sometimes an outline can limit you um, as far as you've, you've boxed yourself in and you, you know, oh, I can't do, so talk about that. But when you flow, you get gems. Um, and some people like the control of an outline and there's nothing wrong with that. Each chapter can have, you know, the five main points and you can list them out. Um, okay, title. Coming up with a working title early on really helps your process because your title pulls you to your goal. You're always thinking about the words, oh, okay, um, crossing the bridge to loving yourself. Like this is, it keeps you on track and it can change. It can change 20 times, but having the title at the start is a good idea. Just a working title. Um, and you think of a book cover image um, in your mind, have a picture. We're very visual and think of books that you like and what what visuals do you prefer and what visuals do you use on your blog and you've had really good feedback about. Decide on a genre, nonfiction, a novel, a memoir. My book was the self-help category, my first book. Um, okay, um, you can, yeah, you can give away a book as a promotion or sell it. Um, it's just cool writing the book. Like, it's who it makes you. You you set a goal and you did it. And it's just um, something no one can take away from you. It's from within you. It's, it's cool. Um, spelling and proofreading, it depends on your writing skill. But if you're blogging, you get practice. And that's the thing. Practice, practice, practice. You get faster, you get better. You read about your topic. That's, that's the goal, you know. Um, so you can hire an editor, and I use a site called Fiverr.com with two R's. I'm not selling anything for Fiverr, but it's really useful as far as um, editors, proofreaders. And the, the site started by everything was $5 years ago. That's why it's called Fiverr. So it's pretty reasonable. You can usually find someone that, that matches you. Um, I hired an editor and he cut half of this book out. He cut 50% 50, 50 of the words out and it's my book, my name's going on it. So I called him and said, hey, can I have some of those words back in there? Because I had the title, which pulled me and it was crossing the bridge and he cut out all the information about crossing the bridge. So I said, oh no, that's my theme and title. So I need that back. So he said, fine, like, like you have the final say. It doesn't matter who you hire. It's your book, and you can make your own changes. Um, you can even get a ghostwriter to write the book if writing's not your thing or you don't have time. Um, and if you do publish, you're going to have to apply for the ISBN number, which is free in Canada. You just have to get the number from them in the code. Um, write a blurb and a bio. Oh, it's so hard to write a blurb about your book. It's, it's a one paragraph thing and people have full time careers writing book blurbs. It's so hard to make that one paragraph pitch. It, it sounds crazy but because you've been writing for months, but to actually sum it up and tell someone what it's about, it's like, whoa, you know. So yeah, just warning you, it sounds easy, but you know, maybe you're good at it, but I wasn't. Um, 
and um, you know sometimes you want to include a photo of yourself on the back or not doesn't really matter um, yeah so your book tells your hero's journey um, you're the hero you're the theme um, I answered questions in my book um, what is loving yourself what is not loving yourself um, what are the blocks to loving yourself do you have cognitive dissonance? Um, do you need to replenish yourself? Sorry. Um, I gave strategies for loving yourself. Don't fall into the perfectionism of the ego. Create a new environment if your um, current environment isn't supporting. Um, take actionable steps. Make new friends. Simulate loving yourself as if it's already happening. Um, take it easy on yourself. Tough love's one thing, but real love is what makes you strong. Real love for yourself. Create a bridge. You're never going to go back to that past that you're, that you're transforming from. Create that bridge in your mind. No, I, I have new boundaries. I won't tolerate that. Um, have a conclusion um, that shapes your decision, you know, because your, your conditions shape your decisions, not, or sorry, your, your decisions are the things that shape your life, not your um, situation or conditions in life. You can't change the past, but you can move away from it. And so I had a lot of quotes um, just to reinforce the idea. A poem by Charlie Chaplin about loving yourself that was quite beautiful. Um, my three main tips for writing your book, find three reference books you like either for the content, the look of the book, or the structure of the book, how it was done. Um, add value before trying to sell. Share. Share what you know, um, help people, because we all need help and we don't really know how, but when we read something useful and it can really change your life, it can really set you on a new course. So, you know, it's fine to sell things, but always add value. People can tell when, um, you know, you just, it's just not authentic when you're just there to sell. It's. Um, and you don't feel the same fulfillment either. Like, it's really meaningful when you share with them. Um, people buy from people they trust. So if you can build that rapport, and they will buy from you because they just, it's a law of reciprocation. They just feel like they've had so much value, they want to return it to you. Um, teaching people about my blog, I, I rented a coffee shop and taught a blogging workshop. And it was really cool to have that in person. I had had the online experience. And I was into like Bitcoin and stuff at the time. And everyone was like, I was blogging on a Bitcoin site. So they were like, whoa, what? You earn Bitcoin? And um, yeah, there's all kinds of things once you get the experience on WordPress that you can do and expand out. Um, so it's really helped me um, to become a writer and, and share. Um, yeah, your book will take you to unexpected places, and I've talked about the hero's journey and how you, you arrive at a transformed place, um, and how George Lucas did his movies based on it. So I went on a Zoom call. I had a lady um, in a writing group uh, contact me, and she said, let's go on a book coaching call. She wanted to write a book. And I said, okay. I didn't know much about her. Her name's Sarita Patel. She was the assistant to George Lucas for 25 years at the Skywalker Ranch. So all of the movies that were being created, all the props were made there. Um, she dealt with him on a daily basis. So, you know, your blog can take you to unreal places if you keep with it. Like, you know, you'd be so surprised um, that I'm helping her write her book, which the guy's a legend and, yeah, it just floors you. Um, Okay, thank you for attending. I'm going to start the Q&A soon. Um, I've slashed the price on my course. It's 90% off for today um, because of a WordCamp WordPress special, and I have a workbook with the course that you follow along. Um, so thank you very much. Um, you've been a great audience, and we're going to um, start with the Q&A if you guys have any questions. <coughs> Thank you.
Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's on Instagram? Or sorry, X, Twitter. Yeah. X, right. <laughs> Sex. <laughs> yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you three quick questions. Yeah. I, I guess one of them was that when I came here, I thought you might be sharing some technical detail about how you used your blog to connect to the book. But from what I'm hearing, it's more you use the blog as kind of a medium to explore and develop your writing. Yes. And then you transferred that into a book. So they're two separate activities. You didn't bother trying to find a bridge that would automatically create your book from your WordPress. Site. No, but I, I imagine you could. Like there's programs like Scrivener and you know that people use. I'm just an artsy, fartsy, airy fairy type, so I just like glean all the information and start, you know, writing it. But yeah, a lot of people would like a more structured um, and if you're Blogging about continuous things, it would be just perfect for a, a book or an ebook. Yeah. So the second question, and yeah. you touched on it, was this um, ISBN number, because there's two mm -hmm. ways of approaching it, as you probably know. One of them is to get your own ISBN number before you go to Amazon or anyone else, and that right. way you've got that control on the ISBN number. If you go to Amazon first, then they'll establish their own Correct. ISBN number. So you looked into that and decided best to go with your own. I got 100. You can get 100. You can reserve them. So I just thought, that'll spur me to write some books. You know? <laughs> yeah, you can get actually 100, so then you don't have to worry. And back when I actually, when I wrote this book, it was create space. Amazon didn't even have KDP in 2016. And um, yeah, so I had to yeah, get my own because they were going to get it. And it was, I think, 10 or $20 back then. So Canada's freed it up. They want people to create. So it's awesome that they're free. The last question is this AI question. Because in many ways, it's like the music industry was a couple of decades, well, many decades ago, four decades ago, where the writers and, and musicians really lost all of their rights totally. to the corporations. And now the AI is doing the same thing. So they're coming along and they're gobbling up your blog yeah. and everybody else's stuff and using that to generate their own AI engines yes. from large language models. So have you worried about that at all or thought about putting a terms of use on, like some people are saying that you know, you're, I'm not granting you rights to right. use this for developing your large language model. I personally am not worried about it. I've been using AI for about two years now. I've been studying it. I listen to podcasts of company owners that use it. And to me, it's a tool that's very useful um, if you're stuck on a concept. Because AI is a language model. It's not a human being. We're, we're the humans, we're the noticers, we're, we're the creators, we program AI. Now until it starts programming itself, we're good. But the thing is, um, Amazon actually has books on there that have been written by AI. And Amazon is refusing to take them off. And the reason is because the laws haven't caught up with AI. So um, I'm actually in the music business as well. And when Napster came out, I don't know if you know, in the 90s, um, bands were sampling all the music. And you know they had 20 samples of some stealing people's music. And they got away with it. And they made a lot of money until the lawyers caught up. And then people were getting fined and charged. So I think currently the legal system is just going crazy on trying to figure out how to regulate AI. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, really, really knows, but, uh, the ISBN number is attached to a copyright uh, organization in the world? Correct. It's an international standard book number, something like that's what it stands for. And it's connected to the, the government. They want to know what you're publishing and where it's going. Like my book um, was in the library, the public library. And yeah, you have to have that if you want to sell it commercially. If you just want to have your book for friends or for clients, you don't need it. It's, it's just your personal book. But yeah, any type of published online on KDP or with a publisher, you need it. So is there any advantage that you get your own ISBN instead of going to Amazon? 
Amazon requires an ISBN, and like this gentleman said, they will they will give it to you if you don't have your own. But I prefer to have my own. Um, um, I just don't want Amazon having control of my ISBN. I might want to publish on Apple Books. I might want to change, and now it's an Amazon ISBN. Um, I think it's better to keep control, keep your material, your rights, your stuff, um, and not outsource it to them. Yeah. Um, all ISBN is, it's just a number. It's like a barcode, yes. scan code. So it's not like the government, the government does not track you by your ISBN. No. They have microchips for that. Of right, yeah. <laughs> the Library of Congress wants your book, though. They want, you know, they'll email you and say, hey, we're, you know, what's your ISBN? Right, but um, so it's like nobody should be afraid of getting an ISBN. No, and no. It's also the case that if you can get 100, that's better. Yes. Because if you have one book, you just got one book. You're not an author yet. Authors write books for. Yeah, true. So, I mean. Uh, uh, you know, very few people have one bestseller and then they retire. True. And then, you know, if they decide to charge, like in America, it's, it's probably about 40 or $50 for an ISBN. Like they charge. Yeah, they charge quite a bit in America. We're lucky in Canada. And I just grabbed 100 because then it's, it's free. I've got it. You never know. You know, if you have the opportunity, you might as well. And then it, it kind of makes you go, okay, you know, I've got it. And, yeah. The other, yes. If you don't think you're going to make forty dollars on your book if you're from the states, mm. then maybe you shouldn't publish your book. Yeah, so I mean, if you can't afford, you know, hundred dollars a year for hosting, maybe you shouldn't have a blog. That sort of thing, right? Yeah. There's. Yeah. That's a point. Like, if you're if you want to make the money back, um, if you're not just using it as a an exercise to to develop. But then you don't need nice people. Yeah. No, you don't need one. Hi. You have an ISBN through Amazon. They also take some of the profits um, when you book through KBN. But if you get your own ISBN, you don't have to share profits with anyone, right? Right. So that's another advantage. Yes, you want to keep as much. And there are best selling, like I went to Bowen Island to a writer's fest, and there was a fellow there that he totally makes a great living from writing. He's done five commercial books, and he self publishes as well. And he's allowed to by his publisher. And he said, well, hey, why not? I can get all the money. And, you know, um, like with his publisher, he has you know certain restrictions, and they take a cut, and they own his rights, and you know you own all your rights on KDP. With the ISB is not an issue of copyright and ownership; it's a product ID. Correct. And essentially, if you're using ISBN, most people would realize um, you will use up three ISBN numbers on one book if you've got it as an e-book, as a software, yes. and a hardcover. So Good point. it really only gives you that. I mean, as far as actual publication and distribution, Amazon is still probably your best bet for your initial um, right. yes. publication because of their reach. Um, but having that same ISBN, when you then publish it on another site, whether it's Apple or something else, yes. you're linking your product. So it's one product regardless of what channel it's That's on. right. Yeah, correct. Good point. Yeah. Yes. We came in late and we apologize for that because this is really interesting. Oh, I'm glad you made it. Um, thank you. Thank you. But um, I was wondering, because I'm actually in the process of writing a cookbook, is, are there any sites that you recommend to put it all together? Because I've got, of course, recipes and pictures and stories. Right. I would suggest um, there's a lot of Facebook groups for writers, and I'm sure there's one for cookbooks. I, I don't, I've never been on one, but um, cookbooks are very popular. And um, yeah, there was one um, just featured in the Globe and Mail. I don't know if you saw it. The three F words we weren't allowed to say food, family, and friends. <laughs> I thought, oh, what a title, like the, the F words my mom wouldn't let us say. And I thought, man, that's great. Like if you can grab a catchy title like that, because yeah. everyone's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, she's been on TV shows. That's awesome. That's yeah, because food is something we share through our history and our family. It's so important to our culture and socialization. Yeah. Yes. Worry more about your title than your ISBN. Yes, a to thousand times more time you about your title. Oh man, cover. yes. ISBN is just sort of like pagination. Yeah, the the cover sells the book. Like I went into Indigo and thought, okay, I'm gonna look at that rack. Well, I want my title to be big. This is just a proof. 
um, I want people to see it, you know. Um, I want my name to be big. Like, you got these little minuscule names on books, and you, you're like, oh, who wrote it? Who, who, what's the title? Like, um, I don't know. To me, it's like, you know, my eyes aren't that good anymore. I like a big, <laughs> big print here, you know. <laughs> Yes. If there is lots of uh, subject to write, do you recommend to write like uh, three books and different uh, volumes or one big book for 100 pages? Oh, ah, three books. People's attention spans are like eight seconds these days and their time, you know, they have to be on their phone for four hours, you know, they can't, they don't have time to read a book, right? Um, yeah, I would say write three. You got much more chance that, you know, one person's going to like one book or, you know. And, yeah. And uh, do you have an idea about writing a movie uh, or a book? Which one will fix according to your opinion? Oh, whatever you prefer, whatever is your passion. If you um, are good at writing movies and dialogue, that write that one. Yeah, whatever your heart is telling you, that is the thing to go with. Like, yeah, because it'll come out beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, with um, a WordPress blog? Yes. And you were able to engage with your audience with comments? Yes. Did that kind of like lead you through that? You were able to make community through them? And then you were able to sell the books through them? Um, you use WordPress at all to kind of... Yeah, I don't really know who buys my book. Like, you'll on Amazon, you'll just um, get a check. And I don't actually know. They'll just be from a different part of the world or, or whatever. And yeah. Um, the karate guy Chuck Norris wanted to be in a movie, and he nobody was interested in this obscure karate guy until he said, "I'm a national karate champion. There are five million people in the National Karate Association. Right. Every one of those will buy a ticket." Yes. And so the the that was like before the internet. But, yeah. Uh, but the point is that. Sometimes when you want to go to a publisher, if you can say, I have 35,000 followers. True. If I have, you know, some of my posts get a million likes. Yes. Or things like that. What you're doing is you're uh, establishing authority. Correct. And yes. And credibility. Yes. And that's what is needed to get picked up just in a bookstore. Definitely if you want to get a, a major publisher to be interested yes. in then having a blog that with analytics and you know, an extensive content totally is telling people that somebody's interested in what you have to say. Yes. And that will get you through in the door a lot more places. And if you have uh, the other thing somebody another client told me, if you have a blog, you've got an opinion. If you yes. have a book, if you author a book then you have authority. Yes. And the difference is True. between somebody with an opinion and an authority is they got a book. Yeah, I mean, you're putting it out to the whole world. Like, when you go on your stats on your WordPress blog, you can see every country. I had 50 countries, you know, Estonia. Like, you, you wouldn't believe what the reach is on your blog. Like, on when you get your blog hosted, it's, it's incredible. And, like, now I'm teaching a memoir class in person. I have about 14 people, and it's instant feedback. If you bring your story in, you get 14 people going, oh, no, 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 that doesn't make sense. So if you can get anybody to read read your writing, it's so valuable for feedback, like not only online, but in person too. It just, and read, um, when you're doing your writing, read it out loud. Because if it doesn't read well, it's not going to read well for them. Yeah, that's really valuable. Just say, even your blog post, just read it out loud. It's got a flow as if, you know, your thoughts are going right into their head too, so. Any more questions or? Yes. Have I thought of doing a podcast? Yes, I've done a podcast. Yes, um, I've done a few episodes. I've been interviewed. I was interviewed by an Instagram expert, and I said I don't know much about Instagram, and he said it's okay. I need people, um, so I went on. Just I just dive in, even if I don't know, um, because it's great to talk to people. Um, I have an astrologist friend, and she I met her at a we did a vision boarding, and she has a, a great podcast, and she had me on and. 
said, talk about your vision board. What, what do you, and I said, oh, I don't like my hair. I want to fix my hair um, because I'm trying to get out and speak about my work. And she goes, oh, your hair's fine. Like, you know, um, yeah, just various, I'm interested in all kinds of different things. So, um, and I did do a few podcasts myself. I, I got all the all the stuff and yeah it, it's good but I need to focus more on writing because that's what I love and I find if you start a podcast mostly all your time's going to that really because you have to get people to interview I think it's great I listen to podcasts while I'm working um, but you know you have to get all the right gear and book your appointments and plan your interviews and read their books and you know um, it, there's a lot to it, like these social media people, they make it look so easy, but that's really uh, their whole day, you know? Yeah. Have you done audio books? I have not, um, but I would like to, yeah. Um, there's a company that you can hire in New York, I don't know, probably now it's more expanded. Um, they're pretty reasonable, and I my son's a musician, so we have a recording studio, so it's perfect. I should do it, but I just keep going on to the next thing and <laughs> changing my my path and, and stuff. Amazon actually has a service, ACX.com. Oh. And you can like submit your manuscript or whatever, and then people will do a little audition, and then you can choose your narrator, and then you pay them per production hour. So oh, cool. So hundred dollars per production hour, so a short ebook. Oh. It's like something like 300 USD, and then it's actually that's the easy way to do it. That's amazing. Sure. Can yeah, you can do it yourself, but I mean, to read your ebook to that high quality with no mistakes and stuff, I mean. Yeah, you have to keep I editing. Have like. I have the microphone because I have a podcast, but it's like oh. I don't want to like spend days doing it. I'd rather just pay 300 dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. I, like I recorded my course and I thought it would be out in a few months and it was six months of editing. It's, a lot. it's like a Hollywood movie, I'm not kidding. Like <laughs> there was a dog barking 80 times during one of my things and we had to remove all the dog barks and like oh, just on and on. <laughs> estimate about six hours, I think what, for professionals though, it's four to six hours per hour of reading. Oh it yeah. Into, uh, into creating a book. Yes, I believe it, yeah. Uh, you know, even very good narrators. Yes. You know, you have to read it. Uh, the, the famous thing is, you know, halfway through the book, a character says, you know, in their thick German accent, and then suddenly you've got to go back <laughs> got because to go. you had a New Jersey accent. Yes, I mean, we all want Morgan Freeman reading our books, you know, he's got the, the acting inflection, you know. <laughs> They have to read through the whole book to make sure that they have all the right Yes, you got to, you know, it has to sound. It's, it's a lot of work, so it's worth 100 bucks now. It is. It's worth the money, yeah. And I think, like, writing books, it's who you become as a person, or writing screenplays or cookbooks. It's just, you know, you're so, like, whoa, I'm an author. And it's like, whoa, I'm a blogger. Like, you know, um, in this day and age, the gig, and gig economy, we don't all have regular jobs. We're always trying to get a side hustle. It's expensive to live. And um, also, you want to realize your true purpose in life and discover what you love and have a legacy for your kids, your grandkids. And well, and that's the point. Yeah. And you're missing that human side. And I think when someone is addressing and reading a book, mm -hmm. that's at home. It's touching the heart. And that's the passion. Yes, that, good point. That's what causes you to turn the next page. And so that's what it's all about. And we're all in such a treadmill. Go, 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 go. We are. Tick, tick. Oh, I've got to get this. Oh, I've got oh. 17 emails. i got to go. Yeah. We're missing the passion. We are. We need to just. Rest, be still, yeah. and know that. Go within, like it's not all outer stuff, it's it's within yeah. us. Um, yeah, we're. That's what hooks people in. Totally. In the business world, when women go shopping and touch a piece of jewelry and put on the clothes, yes. they don't buy something just walking by. No. They don't go to a car lot and just drive by. They have to go in. Yes, they, they have to down. feel it they from the gut. they got to sit there. Oh, that's wow. What, that's this. What our, that's what our message is in our writing. Totally, yeah. It's grabbing them and embracing them and holding on. 
Yeah. Yes, taking them through our eyes, see the world through our, our ears, yeah. our perspective, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, AI can't do that. They can't no. be you. Never. Never. No. no. Next year. No. <laughs> <laughs> you called it. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to be wrapping it up now, and thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys. You're awesome, and I hope you're all going to write books, and... Yeah, take advantage of my course if you if you want to.